Hello, everyone. Um, we have a very exciting topic for you today, and we're really excited to present it. Um, I'm Anthony. This is June. This is Hayu. And Natalie is with us. She had a medical appointment, so she's not able to be here in person, but she's going to be here virtually, and she'll be part of this presentation. Um, and our sponsor is Dr. Kathleen Carley, and we are working with her and ideas for this project. So just a little bit of overview of what we're researching. Um, we're going to be going through the research question, the problem statement, provide a little bit of background literature into the conflict, show how we've collected the data, and then how we've used our methodology for analyzing it, and then provide preliminary results, and then future work for the summer, and then we'll take questions. So, so after talking to Dr. Carly, we were really able to scope down our question and look at how the three world superpowers, the United States, China, and Russia, utilizes Twitter in order to further their foreign policy agenda in Ukraine. So how we're gonna be able to answer this question is we're going to be using Ben maneuvers to be able to do our analysis. Um, we are using the tools or a net mapper to create Ben reports in order to do our analysis, which we will get into later, um, but it's very exciting since this is what we see in the news every single day. So just a little bit background literature so we can understand the foreign policy for uh, each nation. The United States, um, as we all know, the safety and security of American citizens comes first. In the current administration, they are championing diplomacy over military intervention and are really hoping to rebuild alliances. In terms of Ukraine, they have we have, um, the Biden administration has sent a lot of diplomatic, economic, and military uh, commitments and uh, a ton of aid in order to help Ukraine. As for China's foreign policy, which is consistent with China's uh, always foreign policy since its establishment in 1949 and the reformation and open up in the 1980s, the main purpose of China's foreign policy is to maintain independence, regional stability, and world peace as a powerful neutral party, as also to gain mutual respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity, especially for Taiwan and Xinjiang, which is still the, one of the most top, sensitive topics for China today. And also to maintain non-aggression and non-interference in other countries' internal affairs. Uh, as for Russia, uh, Russia's foreign policy is based on uh, 2021 uh, national sec security strategy policy. So, uh, Russia borders uh, many countries, um, so they uh, they focuses on the free Soviet unions, uh, China and uh, Western countries. So especially uh, they want to be friendly with Ukraine. So with that being our background, we knew that with this conflict going on, that we had a lot of interesting things going on within social media. And so what we did was uh, with Casos, we collected a live Twitter feed that collected on a certain keywords in real time. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that. So we collected the data, then we filtered it. Um, we actually used a script written by our own Addison Whitney. So thank you, Addison. Um, but it actually, what we did was that we identified by organization. So either government or media Twitter account and then by country. So we broke it up by United States, Chinese, and then Russian accounts. Um, then we processed it um, using Aura and NetMapper, which are softwares that are developed by Ideas and Casos. And then we analyzed them with Ben Maneuvers, which is a framework for analyzing um, social and narrative. And we're gonna talk about it in a couple of seconds. Um, but just a little bit more about the data. So we were collecting in three different languages, Russian, Ukrainian, and English. And then we also were breaking it up by um, what the region was, what it was related to. So we had Russia related, we had region related, which was like Kiev, goes to Kiev and those types of keywords. And then also internationally related, which is UN, United Nations, NATO, and those type big topic um, hashtags. Um, and so all these, one of the things that we were very blessed with was that this was all collected in real time and so that's before any of the Twitter admins could remove the tweets for being misinformation. So we got the real raw data. The only thing is 
we were russia actually banned twitter on march 4th so we have only a portion um and we haven't been able to see the stages in the later conflicts um we've also had some countries ban uh, russian news media sites so that does impact our able our ability to collect on sputnik and rt um and then because we are trying to measure the chinese we have not been filtering on chinese words um so we're gonna have to go back and that will have, uh, that will be filtered by the twitter admins but it will still provide some sort of insight um, onto the conflict so and then here's just a little bit of our data set uh, you can see uh, the number of unique tweets uh, the number of unique tweeters um, and then you can see some of the top hashtags uh, go figure ukraine's one of the top ones across the board so uh, so as we've been talking a lot about, we're going to be using BEM maneuvers to do our analysis. So what are they? They're a way of categorizing forms of positive and negative manipulation in the cyber domain uh, by really impacting the social network and the narrative. And they're useful because we can truly understand um, who the attackers are and their targets. So the targets are either the social network or the narrative. And we can understand their messaging tactics by this breakdown um, that you see here, starting from build and going all the way to distract. So this is just an outline of what our bend reports look like and where the categories of the bend maneuvers are. And how you're going to talk a lot more about what these reports look like and what they can tell us. Okay, thank you, Natalie. So here's our results for this semester. And so here we begin with Russia. So as you can see on the graph, maybe. Uh, I don't know if you can see clearly. So the highest two bars are this is explained and this one is well narrow. And this is for Russian media. And as for the Russian government accounts, the uh, most high, the highest bars are enhance, narrow, and distort. So as for the Russian accounts, we can see that the Russian media's are there red bars are higher than the green bars, which means that they are more maneuvering other Twitter accounts instead of being maneuvered. While the situation is quite different for the Russian government because they are more like being maneuvered upon instead of maneuvering others. And the situation is different for China's Twitter accounts. So as you can see, the highest bars are back and excite for the media. And for the government accounts, the highest bars would be explained and also many other positive maneuvers. And the, as for the agents, the Chinese media are basically both maneuvering others and being maneuvered upon while the Chinese government is just maneuvering other accounts. And the last, here comes the United States. So we can see that the United States media are mostly doing nuke, distract, and dismay, while the US government, they basically do everything except for the neglect one. So, and as for the agents, the US media, they, uh, they more they are more maneuvering others than being maneuvered while the US government are more being maneuvered. So, so here's our observations. So the, first there's a high count of agents maneuvers for build and boost, which indicates that there were a significant amount of retweets. And there's no country or media group used the, the neglect maneuver in the event. And the China media has high degrees of back maneuvers. And, Currently, we do not know whether this was in support for Russia, Ukraine due to a neutrality of China. And there's consistent amounts of narrowing in Russian government and media. And there's significant nar negative narrative maneuvers in the United States media. Okay, and here's our vision for some. Uh, we analyzed uh, a part of the data. So we will continue to analyze the data uh, more deeply. Um, the political side and uh, technical side. So that's our presentation. So any questions? Yes. Uh, so could you elaborate more on how you collected the data in real time? So what's going on? Where is the matter? Crocker asked how the uh, information is being collected in real time. So basically what's happening is we have a list of keywords. Um, there are 
in English alone, over 200 words that we are pinging off of. And so what's happening is using the Twitter API, it's searching for every single tweet that's ever being tweeted with those keywords. And so whenever that happens, that's getting saved, logged, it's actually going to the same servers that you were mentioning, uh, one of the other teams was mentioning um, with Dr. Carly. So like, it's pretty cool whenever you see data that has 40 gigabytes just for one day. And so all of those tweets are coming in and then we're able to analyze it from there. So, yes. It looked like most of your analysis was coming from the count of each type of maneuver. Um, so really the preponderance of one thing or another. Do you have any metrics as far as like how effective each type of maneuver is? Not at this point. Um, now he was asking for being able to measure how effective each maneuver is. Um, right now we're just trying to collect and see the different trends. Um, we can't necessarily determine like if I keep on tweeting at you, like maybe we would be able to detect your changes. However, at this stage, that's not something that we're developing. Yeah, that would be another like sociology topic. Yes. How much data do you have in each category? Because I can imagine like with US keywords, your or English keywords, you're collecting a lot of data, but for the Chinese characters or the Chinese spelling, you're not collecting as much. Like what's the distribution? So the distribution we actually have um, at cases, there is someone who actually speaks Russian and Ukrainian. So the lists are pretty much comparable. Um, it's actually interesting because the Russian actually has different like spellings for like Putin, I think has six different spellings. Um, and so it's very interesting from that perspective. However, and so between Russian and Ukrainian and US uh, English, it is the same. We, we don't have anything at, in Chinese at the moment. So Hayu was probably going to help us with that over the summer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Why does Twitter? Um, because of Twitter's API, um, they allow free access to all of their tweets. So we're able to get open access. It's something that Dr. Carly's already developed a relationship with. Um, there's actually even more access that you're able to get because you're an academic institution. So that, that's what we chose. There are other ways to do it through Facebook and the other social media sites, but this is the one that was easiest access for us. Because I thought since Russia obviously isn't using Twitter anymore, maybe there's other avenues or even results could be biased because some countries use other social media more than Twitter, but if that's a limitation, that's understandable. Yeah. So we, we really wanted to see week by week and say, okay, this is what they were doing pre-invasion. This is what they were doing during the invasion. And then this is whenever they were shifting their focus. And so whenever we said the week by week analysis, that's really what we're going to be trying to hone in on. So, yeah. yes. For the, because Twitter's not a lot of China at all, right? So I guess for that, are you going off of, like, because I know they have like a lot of English speaking, like people on foreign interface accounts or something, you know, like uh, foreign parent type things. So are you getting out the famous words from those entities as well, or is it all like just Chinese character based here? Do you want to? Okay, so first of all, China is, Twitter is uh, how to say, not really banned in China because you can always use some technical method like VPN, the virtual private networks, to bypass its restrictions. So you will see there are many Chinese posts on Twitter. And I'm sorry, could you repeat your question? So just, were, were you guys just like, focusing on for like when you're looking at like Ben Mears out of from like Chinese yeah. government, are you just looking at? Like Chinese characters or like their specific language set, or are you also taking like the foreign affairs, like the English or other languages in analysis that? So, okay. most of the accounts that we're pinging off of whenever we're filtering for Chinese government is based off of um, those foreign affairs accounts. Um, as we go into it further this summer, we're going to try to build it out so that it is Chinese language. We just at this point. We had multiple difficulties with the software, so we, to get a product out, um, we were limited, and so that's something that we'll be addressing this summer to get the Chinese characters, so that it'll expand just beyond um, those government accounts. Yes. Uh, so given the currency of the domain becoming more capital. 
methodology? Yes. So one of the things that we came up up with is just because we're limited by the software that we're using, we can sometimes bump into stuff that need to be changed or need to be updated in addition to the amount of data that we're processing. Um, so those are two of the things uh, we had hoped to include uh, information from bots. Uh, Dr. Carly has a bot detector. Um, unfortunately for this presentation, like we spent multiple hours trying to get it to work and it didn't work. So we've been going back and forth with her trying to get that information to be processed. Um, so those are some of our limitations um, and we are addressing them. It's just dealing with the developers to be able to make the changes so that we can process it. Thank 